Hello everyone. Okay, so um, this is the uh, Mutune Microtonal Multi-Tool by uh, Tubatech. What I think we're going to do is to split this into two unequal uh, halves. So we're going to start off just by talking about what a temperament is and why it's important, and then look at what the module can do, and then finish up with the performance at the end. So uh, apologies if I'm telling anybody stuff they already know about temperament, but if you don't, this stuff's kind of interesting. Um, so. Prelude, temperaments. Uh, where do we get our notes from? We get our notes from the harmonic series. So we pick a frequency and we multiply it by all the whole numbers, one times F, two times F, three times F. And if you look at that, you'll see that there are some musical intervals that you might recognize, like the octave and the perfect fourth. But there's some that you maybe haven't seen before, like the lesser tridecimal two-thirds tone. That's a tone that isn't one of the semitones on the piano. Um, now, this presents a problem, but also some incredible opportunities, and it goes way back to Pythagoras and the, uh, the ancient Greeks. The problem is that if you start on the low note of a piano, let's say the low C of a piano, and you go up in octaves, those are doublings, and you end up on the top C at the piano, and that will be two, sorry, seven lots of doublings, two to the seven, or times 128. You could also go up in perfect fifths, and that multiplies by one and a half but you need 12 of those all the way around the circle of fifths. So if you do 1.5 to the 12, 1.5, sorry, 12 lots of 1.5, you end up with a different number. So the same note, but a different frequency. And obviously that's a big problem because which one do you pick? So uh, this has implications on tuning as well because how do you get from say uh, a C to an E? Well, C to an E has a, a, a perfect ratio, which is 5 to 4, or 1.25. But you could also go perfect fifth, perfect fifth, perfect fifth, perfect fifth, then down two octaves, and again, you get a different number. So which one is correct? Um, well, sometimes this isn't so much of a problem if we only maintain one key. So some non-Western music that don't deal so much in harmony, and it's just pure uh, melody, that's not so much of a problem, but if we change key as music has done from about 1300 uh, in the West, it's a really big problem because not only are your, uh, your notes different depending on how you get to them, but your intervals are, and we need intervals to form chords. So again, how do we tune our chords? Big problem. Now, this is even worse if you change key. So if you start in one key and you move to others, the offsets produce even more out-of-tune notes because the errors multiply. So here I might start in C, and I'm going to modulate by a minor third up, and a minor third up again, and a minor third up again. And all of the red numbers are where it gets wronger and wronger and wronger. Now, the solution, but it's not a perfect solution, is called temperament. What we do is we fiddle some of the frequencies away from those perfect, pure tunes your ratios to add a few cents here, take away a few cents there. And the object is, first, to avoid what are called wolves. So those are the really bad notes. Second, to allow us, where possible, to modulate, to change key, and have it still sound OK. Enter 12-tone temperament. Now, 12-tone temperament is the solution that practically everything uses. Every um, uh, digital instrument we use comes as a, as a default. Acoustic instruments have it as a default. And it's great. And what it does is share out that error um, amongst all of the notes equally. It's good because you can move around keys. It's not so good because everything sounds equally out of tune. Everything is equally wrong. And what that means is you've never heard a real chord. You've never heard a real major third, a real perfect fifth, if you only listen to 12 tone equal temperament. Of course, that's the preset that's in Logic and the preset that's in Pro Tools. And in fact, also our Eurorat module. So there's the still rather wonderful Mu scale from IntelliGel, but it's still 12 tet, 12 tone equal temperament. Uh, here, if you're interested, that's the table just from the wiki, and it shows you the offsets from the pure tuning to 12 tet. And you can see that basically all of your flat notes are too flat, and all of your sharp notes are too sharp. The beauty of non-equal temperament is suddenly you move from not only having just two keys, majors and minors, like C-sharp minor is exactly the same as C-minor. It's just transposed up. It's the same, it's not qualitatively different. The minute you have non-equal temperaments, you transform from just having two keys to having 24 if you stay in 12, because C-sharp minor is a different thing to C-minor. 
Now, um, here's a little example uh, just to see what these sound like. I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to play uh, me playing the C major prelude from the first book of the 48 by JSB. And if I do this, that's 12 tone equal temperament. Well, it sounds okay. But if I now go to pure tuning, listen to the major third. That's a real major third. It's not the soft focus version that you have in 12 tone equal temperament. Now, those are the wolf notes. It's not great. <laughs> uh, those, those red notes that we saw, that's where the problems occur because I'm playing in C, but I'm tuned to C sharp. Back to 12 tech. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you will have seen those squiggles at the top of the, the presentation slide. That was code that Bach put onto the, the manuscript paper of the Well-Tempered Clavier. It was only decoded about 250 years later. There's the manuscript, the, the cover of J.S. Bach's masterpiece. Look at those squiggles. Those are hiding in plain sight his tuning system. And he thought, it, rather than tell everybody about it, it would be way more fun to hide it and wait for 300 years while we caught up with him. So this is uh, Lerman's solution to Bach's tuning system. And there it is. And it's magical. It's not 12 tone equal temperament, but there are no really serious wolves there. And it means that those 24 preludes and fugues are suddenly all different. They're not just transpositions. Okay, enter Mewtune. Because if I, oh Christ, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to do that. So what Toby's wonderful module does is it takes care of that and a hell of a lot else besides. Um, I bumped into Toby uh, last year at Superbooth 17. We got talking and we went through this kind of collaborative beta testing idea, which, which actually turned out to work really well. So on uh, uh, Google Docs, Toby would write something, I'd write something, and we could, uh, we could interact and work through different solutions. And uh, I'd say, oh, please let it do that. And he would go away and do it. And it was wonderful. Um, we come from a, a, a UK-based uh, electronic music school, so we got students on it. They were uh, looking at it, they were suggesting things, and that was really useful as well. Um, what is Mutant? Well, um, multi-tool is the right term. It, it basically does everything. Uh, anything you could possibly do with uh, CV and gate manipulation, it will do it. It can read and write or send out and receive MIDI. It can do that over five pinned in, in and out. It can do it over USB. It can process CD in. It can process CD out. So you can turn any of the standards for, for moving notes and moving CDs around in and out. Uh, it will apply any temperament solution you want, be it a preset one or one that you have designed yourself to it. Um, here are some vital statistics. You can read those in the manual, but it's extremely fast. Sub uh, um, uh, one millisecond latency across all the channels at the same time. Uh, it's extremely accurate, so that's 16-bit conversion of your voltages. So there's no, uh, there's no perceivable stepping at all. I mean, that's you know, 65,000 steps, if you like. You just can't hear it. Way below what we can detect. Um, and all of that in this tiny little... Uh, a, a module for 250 euros. It's an extraordinary piece, plus expandability now with additional channels of CV processing. Um, that just gives you an idea of, of what you've got in. The, the things I would uh, bring your attention to are not just the MIDI merger and router, but the uh, uh, the frequency counting facilities that it can do, because it can, as well as doing uh, uh, microtonal stuff, you can use it to tune your oscillators and calibrate your oscillators. So what I'm going to do is show you some video clips of this in place, because we've got a fairly complex patch here, so you can sort of zoom in on it doing what it does with a specific example. So the first thing is just simple VCO tuning. If you're playing live and you, you, can't, you don't have a cue mix, you can't monitor it, you, but you don't want to come in out of tune, you can just plug it into the front and it will give you um, a hertz reading for the audio output of your oscillator. So here is just... Now, do you see the, the, the hertz reading there? 300, 715, 301. Down to one decimal place of frequency. That, you know, that's all you need. Um, 
This is going to be interesting, flicking back and forth between these. Oh, well, let's try. Whoops. Sorry. Shit. Uh. Sorry about this. Calibration. Once you've done the tuning, um, the mutune will actually send out a voltage reference over the entire range, a 10 octave range of its output, so that you can uh, calibrate VCOs uh, if you're concerned that they go a bit flat or a bit sharp at the top of their range. So uh, as an example of that, here's VCO calibration. So you get the Hertz offset. And that, so that should be 220 perfectly, it's just a fraction off. And what you can do is to dial in the offset. So you tell Mewtune to be a little bit sharp or a little bit flat at the top. So it's accommodating your, um, your offset, a little bit of aliasing there um, on, the, on the recording. So that's phenomenally useful and you can actually save those um, as presets. So if you know that you have a particular oscillator that goes a bit flat uh, at the top end of its range, uh, that's invaluable for, um, uh, uh, for scaling it. Um, in the new firmware update, there's this phenomenal feature which is uh, uh, auto tracking. So it will actually do that automatically. This isn't out yet, but it's in the new version of the firmware. Um, so if I what I would like this. to show you is how it automatically tunes the system. So if I change the pitch here, you will hear it changing for a very short time, but then it's stable again. And um, we can look at the two waveforms of the two VCOs here on the oscilloscope. And I'm now changing the pitch of one of the oscillators. And as you can see... It's incredibly stable. Incredibly stable. Um, So, navigating the temperament banks, it ships with over 5,000 um, pre-done uh, uh, temperaments in it, which you would imagine is quite difficult to navigate through. It's actually extremely easy. Um, if I go to temperament selection, you can just see, here I've got 12 12 equal. Down to P. Harry Parch. Here's the 43 note uh, famous part scale. That's 43 divisions in an octave. Um, you can also do your own custom tunes. So on board, there's a little kind of bell peel. I'm going to edit. YouTube does here. It recognizes all of the known ratios. So you're getting a perfect major third there, five to four, as we saw in the example before. Perfect, perfect fourth. Um, it also has scale masks in it. So you can do more simple, more traditional uh, scale quantization where you're having tempered it, you can knock out certain notes. So I'm going from just sample and hold here and I can just go in. Do you see those arrows from the number to the frequency? I'm effectively disconnecting, taking those notes out of the scale. And if I do the right ones, my sample and hold just becomes Aeolian mode. My favorite stuff is the MIDI uh, in and out. So it's, uh, it will take a MIDI stream, turn that into CV. So here's 
Steve Rush's wonderful piano phase. Straight out of logic, now it's rings phase. And also, I'm streaming some MIDI information to change what, what rings is doing here. And best of all, you can take CV uh, uh, out of um, Mewtune, turn it into MIDI. So, here's a piece I'm working on here, which is triggering Rene samples, but in fact, into live notation for reading musicians. So, as that cycles through, Logic will then print that score, and my live musicians uh, will then hopefully play the right notes in real time to generate this. Now, they've got to be pretty sharp readers, right? There's the live notation. They get a bar to think about it, come on. Um, now, uh, finally, if you have vintage synths like I have, MS20, it will do volts per hertz conversion. So, if you want a bit of that, straight into an MS-20, and that's volts per hertz, not volts per octave. So it's a really seriously incredible module. Um, what we're going to do now, just to demonstrate some of that, is, oops, not that one, is to do a piece that's based around the Harry Parch 43 scale that you heard there. If you, don't, if you haven't heard of Harry Parch, go and look at him. It's fantastic stuff. He built his old instruments from scratch because nothing else played them. Um, and a piece like this would not be possible without something like uh, YouTube. So, um, yeah, hands up to Toby for designing it. It's fabulous. Here the guy. Okay. Are we good? You happy?
go.